Wow. This show really got released, huh? All right. CW's Gotham Knight. <laughs> okay, okay, all right, okay, okay. I'm, I'm done. No more laughing. Let's do this. CW's Gotham Knights. I can't believe this show is a thing. Well. No, I can believe it. This is what the CW is. This is exactly the kind of show that I would expect from the former writers of Batwoman on a network that was sold for zero dollars and zero cents. But still, I can't believe it. We are in an age when David Zaslav walked into WB, took one look at their books, and had no qualms about axing Batwoman, Naomi, and Legends of Tomorrow, put a ticking clock on Riverdale, killed the new and diverse Supergirl solo movie, and tossed the new and diverse Batgirl movie in the vault and threw away the key for being not releasable. Their words. All signs were pointing to this being a new era for DC, where they were going to start having more quality control and have higher standards when it came to releasing trash content that could harm the DC brand. And even in that environment, somehow, some way, Gotham Night slipped through the cracks and made it to air despite being such an unimaginably pathetic afterthought that James Gunn didn't even care enough to label it as an Elseworld show. Because after some genius at the CW attached the former writers of Batwoman to yet another DC IP, gave them no budget and said, just do whatever, I don't care. Maybe James James Gunn just wanted to stay away from this altogether and keep his hands clean. Can't fault him for that, I guess. I assume they must have been too far into production to stop it by the time Zaslav came in, but still, letting this schlock see the light of day, even if we are blaming it on your predecessors? Not a good look, dudes. Not a good look at all. So I have little doubt what's gonna happen here. With the sale of the CW and future DC Studio shows apparently heading to HBO, I imagine they'll just burn off the episodes they have in the can and and then that'll be it. But that doesn't mean we can't have some fun with it in the meantime. I mean, make no mistake, Gotham Knights is DOA like you wouldn't fucking believe, but if I can't get some enjoyment from poking its rotting corpse with a stick, then what's the point of me even being here? Anywho, the show begins with a narration by our main character and Bruce Wayne's son, Damian Wayne. Oh, no, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I'm sorry. My bad, that was a slip of the tongue. It's not Damien. For a second there, I was under the impression that the writers gave a rat's ass about the Batman mythos. Won't make that mistake again. No, apparently this show is taking place in some new bullshit alternate universe where the Bat family is not a thing. So Dick Grayson, Jason Todd, Tim Drake, Damian Wayne, I wouldn't expect to see any of them. Instead, make way for Bruce's brand new son created specifically for this show, Turner Hayes, some fancy pants twink looking dipshit cast out of a modeling catalog. Because why would we want our comic book show to be anything like the comic books? Fans aren't tuning in to see that shit. So Turner tells us via narration, I guess Rachel Maddow stopped returning their calls, that his parents were murdered when he was a kid and Bruce Wayne adopted him for some reason. Then we see Bruce in his office looking at some weird coin with an owl stamped on it and he opens up a secret compartment where he keeps his Batman mask. Not the bat suit or cape or cowl or anything else, mind you, just the mask. Because, you know, when Bruce has to suit up, that'll make it easier somehow to get the mask in his office and then go to a different place to get the rest of his gear. That makes sense, right? Right? 
Then we meet Turner Hayes. And before we do anything else, like establishing characters or story or telling the audience why we shouldn't turn the TV off immediately, because we're on the CW, damn it, we gotta have a love triangle. I kid you not, it's the first f***ing thing they do. And to my great surprise after three seasons of Batwoman, it's a straight love triangle. I know, right? I'm as stunned as you are. Turner defeats some plank of wood in a fencing match, and the plank of wood is surly about this because they're both lusting after the same hot blonde girl. Oh boy. Double digit ratings, here we come. But no time to elaborate on that. Turner's dad is out working late tonight, so you know what that means. Party at Wayne Manor, bitches! We don't even know the characters' names yet. So cut to the big bash at Turner's place, and you can tell the writers were binging stuff like the Vampire Diaries and Legacies and other crap like that when they were writing this, because it looks like every single dark-ish teen CW soap made in the last 15 years. A bunch of rich, impossibly pretty, got no personality to save their damn life assholes, underage drinking, finding an empty room to hook up in, it's every tired trope you can think of. And yeah, the idea of Wayne Manor being used to push cheesy, cliched YA garbage like this is pretty revolting and offensive. But the only character who has anything close to a problem with that is Cressida. Yeah. Cressida. You didn't think Alfred was there, did you? You did? Well, don't you feel stupid now. What happened to Alfred? Beats me. All the writers cared about is that he's not there anymore, so they could swap him out for a new, younger, more diverse female model. Lucky us. Someone almost knocks over an expensive-looking vase, but it's saved by another impossibly pretty person who we're supposed to think is mousy and unattractive because she's wearing glasses. This is Carrie. Her and Turner have Trig together. Remember that for later. It's gonna be really important. Then. Turner has to stop a couple from hooking up in the billiard room, and wouldn't you know it, it's that surly plank of wood from earlier and the hot blonde girl, Stephanie. Maybe she's Stephanie Brown, but on this show, who the hell knows? And we certainly don't find out here. That wasn't important. The important thing is that Turner cock-blocked them, so now they're gonna have to find another room to hook up in. <laughs> Thanks, Turner. <laughs> Then we go to Wayne Tower, which turns out is just as hilariously easy for bad guys to waltz into as it was in Batwoman. Here's where we meet our teenage delinquent characters, who we know are delinquents because they wear leather jackets and ripped jeans and too much eyeliner and cop an attitude about everything. They blind one security camera, take out a motion sensor in the air duct, and just like that, Bruce's office is all clear for them to break into. It was that easy. I mean... I guess that is technically more security than the office had on Batwoman, but still, that is so lame, it's almost like Bruce wanted people to break in. And I guess the security guards have the night off or something, because these assholes are turning the lights on and talking loudly and screwing around. You'd never think they were committing breaking and entering on the richest guy in the city, let alone a superhero who's supposed to have a big hang-up with security and keeping his important belongings fortified and stupid stuff like that. For the record, this is is Duella, Harper, and Cullen. Just so you all know exactly which characters from the comics are getting bastardized here. So they get into a safe, which for some reason was already open, and inside they find a gun. But not just any gun, the gun Joe Chill used to kill Bruce Wayne's parents, which someone paid them $100,000 to steal. But something is very strange. The barrel of the gun is warm, as if it's been recently fired. Then a helicopter flies by and shines a big bright light through the window, which they're just now noticing is broken with your bat is dead written on it. So they look out the window and there's Bruce Wayne lying on the pavement below them dead. Like a bitch. And that is all the writers think Batman is good for. Yeah. I don't know what it is with these f***ers. What their fascination is with instantly fridging Batman on every Batman-related show they come up with, but they just did it again! Because the last show we tried that on was bleeding viewers for three years straight, so we must be onto something, right? Jesus Christ. I'd ask them what the definition of insanity is, but frankly, I don't think they care. And look, I don't know what the deal is here. Whether the higher-ups gave you permission to actually use Batman or not, I'm guessing not. Not, but here's a crazy thought. Whether you 
can or can't use Batman, how about you stop being little bitches about it and treat the most popular comics character in the world with some f***ing respect? I mean, is it really that difficult to just give the viewers what they want and keep asking for over and over and over again? Is it? The police show up, and Bruce's corpse is wearing the Batman mask. So Harvey, played by a regretting his life choices even more than Dugray Scott did Misha Collins, decides this can only mean that Bruce Wayne was Batman, and not that whoever killed him just put the mask on his body to f*** with them. It's not like Gotham has any supervillains who might enjoy playing mind games like that, right? So the delinquents make the GCPD look like jackasses, they sneak out of the building, hotwire a cop car, and peel rubber out of there, while blasting music and blaring the siren, because that's a great way to not get caught. Meanwhile, Turner's busy being pissy about Stephanie hooking up with the surly plank of wood when Harvey rolls in like, Sorry, Turner, your dad's dead. By the way, did you know he was Batman? So Turner does some acting about this. My dad couldn't have been Batman. He would have told me. There's no way he was out every night fighting bad guys. He throws a bottle and then he hears the booze dripping down something. So he fiddles with a thing on the wall for like five seconds and boom, he finds the Batcave entrance. That's all it took. Are you noticing a pattern here? There's almost nothing original about this. All the unimaginable stupidities that made Batwoman such a f***ing chore to get through, they're all back. Bruce's office having an open door policy for any and all criminals. The Batcave being so secretive that you can find it by accident if you're just f***ing around in the right place. All this bullshit they just recycled from the other show. And frankly, CW, what the hell else were you expecting from these people? What was your thought process here? Did you figure, well, they shit the bed with their last Batman-related show, but let's give them another one. Maybe they'll get it right this time. No wonder the CW never made a f***ing dime. This network has raised failing up to goddamn Shakespearean levels. So Turner and Stephanie find the Batcave, which is probably where most of the show's budget went, and it still looks even less impressive than the one on Batwoman, and that was the cold open. They couldn't even wait 11 f***ing minutes to kill Batman off. We're in for quite a ride, aren't we? The delinquents are arguing in their hideout about someone setting them up to take the fall for the murder. Duella set up the gig, but she didn't bother to find out who hired them or why because she's an idiot. Cullen is freaked out, but Harper thinks thinks this money is going to get them out of Gotham, so whatever Z's. And while they're doing that, Turner's giving some bullshit speech at Bruce's funeral, and it's supposed to be all profound and heartbreaking and stuff, but wow, the actor is not up for it. There's just not a lot to work with there, man. Not 15 minutes in, and I'm already missing Rachel Scarston. Sure, Alice was a fucking train wreck, but at least Rachel was fun to watch. This kid, though... I won't go so far as to say it's like they dressed Ruby Rose up like a boy, but she kind of looked like one already, so who the hell could be sure? Also, the police got an anonymous tip about where the delinquents are hiding, or maybe they just tracked the cop car they stole because those things are all low-jacked, so they go arrest them. Harvey tells Turner they got him, but Turner wants to know who hired them to kill Bruce and doesn't seem to think anyone's going to find out because without Batman, who's going to solve the murder of Bruce Wayne? Oh, I don't know. Other superheroes? The police, maybe? I'm guessing Jim Gordon isn't a thing on this show, but there's gotta be a few honest cops in Gotham, right? Nope. They're all crooked. And much more disturbingly, as we're about to find out, TRANSPHOBIC! <laughs> yeah. We all know where this is going, don't we? So Turner wants to go see Harvey to find out how the investigation's going, even though he just did that in the previous scene five seconds earlier. But new diverse female Alfred says, no, you have school. And BT dubs, I'm more fun than Alfred ever was. Is there any aspect of the Batman mythos these writers don't have contempt for? If there is, I haven't seen it yet. The delinquents are being questioned, and Duella claims to be the Joker's daughter. Seems like there would be records of that if it happened the way she says it did. The much dumber thing about this is that she's acting as guilty as she possibly can despite being innocent of this particular crime. Not all the other crimes they committed last night, mind you, but this one. Cut to the fancy schmancy prep school where the surly plank of wood gets in Turner's face about how could he have not known his dad was Batman? And Turner gets angry, which we know because Turner makes a frowny face, pushes him against the wall, and then walks away all huffy-like. He's just a boiling cauldron of emotions 
questions, isn't he? Apparently, this school has some old abandoned clock tower that can only be accessed with a passcode, which all the students have. For some reason. Stephanie and Turner talk up there, and Turner decides that the police may be doing everything they can, but they have something the police don't have. The Batcave. Not really sure how much good the Batcave is gonna be, though. There really isn't that much in there. Hell, the legendary Batcomputer is just a couple iMacs at a desk. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. It's so f***ing cheap! Even the Batwoman crew sprung for a set piece of some kind. This is literally just a f***ing table with some Best Buy desktops on it. I don't even have to make a joke! I'm struggling not to bust a gut laughing just looking at this shit! So, Stephanie is going to use the Bat computer to hack into Gotham National Bank. Oh, did I mention Stephanie is a hacker? Yeah, the show just dropped that on us right there. Because with no Barbara Gordon around, someone's gotta be the Felicity of Gotham Knights. God knows every Arrowverse show had to have one. And if not the blonde chick, then who? Back to the delinquents. Harper was a straight-A student until the day her mom took off and her dad decided that he didn't like having a bisexual for a daughter, so naturally, she had to get her and her brother out of there. And the cop doing the interrogating finds her use of the B word a little suspect, which of course is how you know he's evil. Then, when it's Cullen's turn, Harvey has to chastise the interrogator for attempting to call Cullen by the name on his birth certificate. Oh, 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 no! I'm so sorry, Harvey! Is using Cullen's dead name offensive to the f***ing murder suspect? Oh my god, what have we done?! I mean, sure, we booked this kid for like half a dozen crimes up to and including the death of Batman, but a cop having the audacity to call Cullen by his legal name? That son of a bitch! The police are the real supervillains, aren't they? But hey, it's cool. <laughs> it's cool. We're just trying to find Batman's killer here, but sure, that stuff can wait. We can take our eye off the ball for a while to demonize transphobes. I mean, what else is a show like this for? Am I right, people? God damn it. Look, I don't give a shit what name he wants to go by, okay? Call yourself Asshat McGee for all I care. But whether you did the murder or not, you wouldn't be in that room right now if you hadn't made some bad f***ing life choices. All that crime, for starters. So the way I see it, you kind of forfeited your right to go by a different name when they hauled your ass in for... you know... All that stuff you did. So if the cop wants to call you by the legal name on your f***ing birth certificate, I don't think he's being the unreasonable one here. Not that that stops the writers from demonizing the f*** out of him for it, though. Also, I have no idea if Asshat McGee is trans in the comics. I'm going out on a limb and guessing he's not. If he is, whatever. If you want to use a trans character, fine. Go ahead. I don't care. If he's not, then it's just one more case of the writers changing shit for no reason because they have no respect whatsoever for the IP the show is based on. Throw it on the pile with the others and let's move on for Christ's sake. So Harvey orders Officer Transphobe to take a walk for hurting the murder suspect's fee-fees and then apologizes to the murder suspect. That's where we are now. You cannot make this shit up. He thinks Asshat McGee didn't do the murder, but Harper is more than willing to confess to it as long as her brother goes free. Uh, sweetie, given that your fingerprints are on the safe, Duella's prints are on the murder weapon, and they have all three of you for B&E assaulting cops and Grand Theft Auto, I don't think you're in a position to be making deals here. Shut up. But she doesn't know who hired them anyway, and that's what Harvey cares about, so no deal. Aw, shucks. Back at the Batcave, Stephanie has hacked into every bank at the same time. So, yeah, she's definitely the Felicity. <laughs> Turner wants to know who paid off the delinquents, and they tease that he's gonna take a batarang and go all vigilante on this person, which is hysterical. Turner looks like he'd fall over if you blew on him too hard. But then Stephanie finds the account that paid them, and it's Turner's account. Cue the GCPD driving up to Wayne Manor to arrest him, and apparently they found Turner in the Batcave? How? Beats me. He was safely hidden down there, but they still walk him out of the house in handcuffs. Maybe he turned himself in voluntarily, but why would he do that if he knows he's being set up? This is f***. Stupid! So now Turner's up shit creek, and we find out that three days earlier, Bruce had made an appointment to change the beneficiary on his will. So that's motive. And Officer Transphobe is under the assumption that motive and financial records pointing to Turner paying someone to kill his dad means that Turner probably paid someone to kill his dad, but it doesn't. In actuality, it means that Officer Transphobe is evil. As if him being a transphobe didn't make that obvious enough. Subtle, writers. Very subtle. Bruce's lawyers are 
refusing to represent Turner, so Harvey's his only friend here, but Harvey's having a hard time making a case for anyone else being the suspect. I mean, whoever it is has to be a transphobe, obviously, but that's all they've got to go on right now. He shows Turner the owl coin, but neither of them know what it means because, just like the writers, they don't read comics. Then Turner gets locked up with the other three, and it's here that we find out from Duella that Batman murdered the Joker off screen in this show too. So, no respect for Bruce's no-kill rule. That's another thing that carried over from Batwoman. Shocking. They all start arguing because they think Turner set them up. At one point, Turner mentions that their prints are on the gun, which beats me how he knows that, because when the cops found them, they'd already been paid for it, so the gun should have passed on to whoever really set them up at that point. We should probably get used to plot holes like that. Anyway, long story short, they start fighting, Duella kicks Turner's ass, then the cops rush in, and they kick Turner's ass, so... Yeah, Turner teasing that he'd go all vigilante earlier? That was bullshit, because this guy sucks. Harvey avoids talking to the media, then gets in a car with some woman who doesn't have a name yet, she could be anybody, and she tells him that if he wants to run for mayor, because that's a thing now, how he handles this Turner situation is going to make or break that campaign. Or maybe it'll be acid in the face that does it, who knows. Turner uses his one phone call to tell Stephanie to get her Felicity on and use the bat eye mask like a magic wand to figure all this out. Then he gets taken away with the other three, who, turns out, staged the fight in the cell. The punches on Turner were real, but the fight was staged, so they could swipe the keys off the cops and get out of their cuffs. Also, after meeting Turner, they knew immediately that he was too much of an idiot to frame them, but someone sure as hell did, so they all need to get gone before they get shanked in Blackgate to make the frame-up complete. And because Turner doesn't like his chances of not dropping the soap in the shower, he picks a side they get out of their cuffs, fight off the cops in the truck, who are all much bigger than they are. These fight scenes are f***ing terrible, by the way. The driver gets taken out somehow, so Turner reaches through the window, grabs the steering wheel, and intentionally crashes the truck. Not really sure what his plan was there, since the truck is flanked by, like, five cop cars, but it makes sense if you remember that Turner is... Really not that bright. Duella tries using Officer Transphobe as a meat shield, but Turner stops her. That doesn't matter, though, because to the shock of no one except Turner, every cop in the f***ing city is evil. Which is what tends to happen when you don't have Jim Gordon running things, you dumbass. So all the evil transphobe cops are about to kill them when all of a sudden, a goddamn RPG shoots out of the sky, blows up one of the cop cars, bat gadgets start raining down that shatter all the windows, then, some mysterious girl in black appears, and despite being five foot nothing, 90 pounds soaking wet, she overpowers every remaining cop with her bare hands, despite them being twice her size, and it looks every bit as unconvincing as it sounds. This girl has never had a day of fight training in her life, and it shows. Then, she takes off her goggles, and holy smokes, it's Carrie! You know, from Trig! Weren't you just dying to know how that scintillating plot thread would pay off? Oh, man. <laughs> Can we talk about these action scenes for a minute? Look, the fights on Batwoman were never good, but there was a difference between the fights early in the show when the stunt team kind of gave a shit, and the fights toward the end of the show when the stunt team had long since checked out. With the fights here, it's not that the stunt team checked out, it's more like they left the country and are watching the show from home, flipping the screen off and laughing at you. Sure, you did actually blow up the cop car. Okay, cool, but you did it with a weapon Batman would never use. The guy doesn't even use guns, but he's giving a 15-year-old girl explosive military-grade hardware? off. So the day is saved thanks to Carrie, but she didn't bring the Batmobile. I mean, why would comics fans want to see that, right? No, she brought her mom's car, because that's much cooler. So Duella punches Turner in the face again for almost getting them killed, and away they go. Because Turner's an idiot, instead of finding a place to hide, they go to Bruce's grave, i.e. one of the first places the cops and the media would look for him. Brilliant. Carrie tells Turner how she became Robin, Batman got thrown off a roof one night, she dragged him to safety, and... 
That was all it took. Doesn't explain how she's punching way above her weight class, though. Turner's still pouting about how his dad never told him about this incredibly secretive and dangerous thing that could have gotten Turner killed if he had known. Oh, boo fucking who. But Duella correctly points out that they're a little exposed out here, so maybe they should be somewhere else. And so Turner decides to hide them in the old clock tower at the school. You know, the one that all the students apparently have the passcode to. Wow, Turner is f***ing dumb. So naturally, after Turner has been proven to be the stupidest person in the room multiple times in the last few minutes, all of a sudden, he's the one making all the plans now. Why? I don't know. Why hide in a place where you could be easily found during study hall when the students sneak up there to get high or some shit? I don't know. I get it if you don't want the delinquents crashing in the Batcave. Fine. But... Maybe put someone else in charge, at least? I mean, sure, none of these dipshits are gonna move the needle all that much when it comes to brain activity, but at least the delinquents have street smarts to some extent, and Carrie has weapons in her mom's car and shit. Doesn't know how to keep a secret identity, though, apparently. But Turner is the stupidest, most useless person here! Why the hell is he giving the orders all of a sudden? Anyway, clearing their names is gonna be tough since it looks like every cop in the damn city is crooked. All they have to go on is Officer Transphobe's watch, which Asshat McGee took off him during the fight, and on the back of the watch is the same owl symbol that was on the coin. And Duella knows what that means because she heard all about the Court of Owls in Arkham, where she grew up. Because after the Joker knocked up her mom in Arkham and took off to bang Harley Quinn, the doctors never called social services or put her in the foster system like any normal person would in that situation. They just let this innocent baby grow up in an insane asylum surrounded by killers and psychopaths. Because that makes sense. Yeah, that's... that's exactly what would happen. So, diverse female Alfred burns Bruce's amended will, some guy in black beheads Officer Transphobe with a sword, and we mercifully close out the first episode of the CW's Gotham Knights. Holy gods, that was awful. So, what is there left to say? I mean... I don't think I need to elaborate on much of this. The second we saw executive producer Greg Berlanti, that told you everything you could possibly need to know. It treats the Batman mythos like toilet paper, the CG is cheap as hell, the fight scenes are half-assed, the acting ranges from amateurish to Ruby Rose light, clearly they've got no f***ing money to work with, and the writing is as bad or worse than you would expect coming from the Batwoman B-team. It's riddled with plot holes, politics, the cops are evil, not because the story says so, but because they're transphobes, all the characters are f***ing idiots, and Turner, despite being the main character, is the biggest dumbass out of all of them, because what other role is the straight white guy gonna play here? The cast is exactly what you'd think on a CW show. People are there for their looks, with acting talent a plus, but not a requirement. If there's a Rachel Scarston in this cast, it's probably the Duella chick. At least she has a personality, which is more than you can say for a lot of these other clowns. The rest of them might have one character trait if they're lucky. Harper is surly. Asshat McGee is trans and surly. Carrie is from Trig, obviously. Stephanie is a hacker. Turner is uh, he complains a lot. That's something. Not surprisingly, this entire production is just a bunch of no-talent hack jackasses who call themselves writers and have no idea or care what they're doing looking for one more paycheck. It's every tired CW cliche in the book. In terms of comic book fodder, it feels like something that would have been made pre-Smallville, long before TV producers realized that they could actually make money with these IPs if they just, you know, try. So yeah, this was embarrassing even for the CW. Epic fail across the board. It couldn't be more DOA if it tried. But I'll say this. I laughed a lot. Think back to the first Batwoman video. One of my main complaints was that it was bad, but not so bad it's funny. But this? This was f***ing funny. This wasn't 50 chimps at a typewriter writing a script. This was 50 chimps did a bunch of cocaine, took a giant shit, smeared their shit all over the typewriter, called that a script, and then the Gotham Knights crew came along and filmed it. It's so mind-bogglingly incompetent, it's like they wanted to be laughed at. So... 
in a weird way, I actually kind of enjoyed myself here. And that's where I bring this to all of you. Remember how you made that first Batwoman video blow up? I need you guys to do that again. It might be hard, the algorithm's been kicking my ass lately, but I need enough views on this video to justify making more. I could use a few more laughs, so believe it or not, I would like to continue reviewing Gotham Knights. Sure, I may change my tune after a couple episodes, but damn it, I think this could be a lot of fun. So if you guys want more Gotham Knights videos from me, you know what to do. Also, do all the other YouTube things. Ding the bell icon, follow my social media for notifications when I upload new stuff. Links are down there. Thumbs up the video, subscribe, make sure you're still subscribed, and I'll be back with more soon. Take care, stay tuned. I'm gonna go watch some Batman content where Batman is actually f***ing alive for a change. I'll see you next time.